Welcome to Stage Mom Podcast, a podcast for breakthrough bands and artists. Today, we have Luna Scar. Luna Scar is a pop artist originally out of Miami, Florida, but currently out of New York. I had such a great time getting to know Luna. She is such a talented artist that not only writes all of her own music, but she produces it all herself as well. Talented is actually an understatement. We talk about her career, her move, relationships, and her very favorite, Bad Bunny. Can't wait to sit down with her again. Luna Scar is here with us today. I'm so honored that you said you would sit down with me. Um, I've been watching you since, I don't know, three, four years now. And I think that um, just watching you evolve into what you are today has been magnificent. So why don't you just go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know your name, your your age, and like a little bit of background. So my name is Luna Scar. I'm a musician originally based in Miami, but now I'm based in New York. Um, I'm a pop artist, producer, songwriter, and I'm 20, so I'm very young. Almost 21, yes. though. I think that you were 17 working at Top Golf when we first met down at the yes. Gibson showroom. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No, I was 16. 16. No, 17. You're right. You're right. 17. Okay. 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 Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's so crazy. Um, so, how? It's a question I've been wondering. Where do? You, how did you come up with Luna Scar? Like, is there a meaning behind it? Or I mean, my nine-year-old translated it to English for me, but uh, like what, like moon something, or is it stop? What is it? So Luna will like literally translated with moon in Spanish. Um, okay. But the name came, it's a very funny story. I was like 13 or 14 and I was very obsessed with the moon. Like I have a moon phases tattoo and all like, I used to be uh -huh. very obsessed with the moon. So Luna came kind of naturally. Mm -hmm. and in terms of scar, it used to be Scarlet. Like if you watch a lot of my older YouTube videos and whatnot, like you'll see me still say Scarlet. You'll see it in the in the captions and whatnot. Mm -hmm. and eventually, just shortened out. But Scarlet originally came. I was like, you know what? This sounds kind of like a porn star or stripper. That sounds. Really <laughs> and that was quite literally the logic. There was nothing else behind. Oh, that's the so part. funny. It's so funny when you hear about how people come up with their names. It's just like. Wow, you, you, it's just the craziest thing. Like I was talking to some guys the other day, I thought for sure it was something really in depth and it was just literally the name of a favorite song of theirs. And yeah, so and sometimes just, it's very yeah. simple. It's like, yeah, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah, true. It's like super deep response for it. But then I get to the last part and I'm like, yeah, it's really not that, <laughs> not that deep. <laughs> That's funny. But all right. So what made you get started in industry and how old were you when you first started? Right. So, I mean, I've always liked singing. That's always been something that I've been accustomed to doing. Like at school, I'd be the person doing like all the plays, all the shows, that kind of thing. Um, and when I was in about middle school or like super late elementary school, um, I guess I started getting a lot more depressed and I was trying to find a way to just cope with it and everything was writing. So I know it's like incredibly cliche and whatnot, but that's how it all started for me. Like I'm a lyricist right. before anything else. Right. Um, and so I started writing my very first song, I think, when I was like 12. And then from there, I wrote a bunch of music when I was 13 and mm -hmm. eventually released that when I was 16. So I worked on this wow. project for a good three years, produced it myself, like did everything myself. The quality is very, you know, it's questionable, but hey, I was 13. I didn't know what I was right, doing. Right, <laughs> right, right. But I've been doing it since I was 13, so quite a while now. Do you still produce all your own stuff? Oh, yeah. All of my stuff is. That's awesome. I say otherwise, it's all me. Because I have seen since the Luna that I saw at the Gibson showroom and the Luna today, it has evolved like really professional. And so you do a great job at it. Thank yeah, you. really good. Um, so what is your favorite performance to date? Mm, I think the very last one that I did at Revolution. Mm, that was a good one. That, that was probably my favorite one to date. I think everything lined up perfectly. That was my first time having like a drummer on stage with me too. Right. That definitely leveled it up and it made it so much more intense and yeah i don't know i feel like that one was the most cultivated i've been since like each time i feel like i kind of level up but mm -hmm. that one's definitely been my favorite that one was a good yeah one. that was awesome that was a really good one I, and i brought a lot of friends to that show and they were all wow they were like oh, wow <laughs> yes and i love how you've made the pink your trademark i do and like and i am sending you those pink eyelashes i have a pair oh, for you with the yeah, magnetic eyeliner Oh, oh, you were the yeah. I got some black ones. I, I the magnetic have, ones. Yeah, I used to. Uh, I have so many. I should send you a couple because they're just sitting there because I just don't have enough patience to put them on. And I bought a whole bunch 
with the magnetic with the black eyeliner, magnetic eyeliner, and I've got right. black. I've got like I'll send them all to you because you'll use them. Oh um, but yeah. I have some pink ones. And um, yeah, they're Tori Bell ones. To give a shout out to Tori Bell, I guess. But um, yeah, I don't. What kind do you use? Um, I usually use Glamnetic. Oh my gosh, my friend makes fun of me all the time because anytime, like, just absolutely for no reason, I'll be like, y'all, my, my lashes, they're magnetic. They're so easy to put on. Aren't they the like, coolest? Lashes, I don't have the patience for them. They just don't stick. Magnetic, <laughs> like, I started using them maybe like two or three years ago, and that's just been my thing yeah. since. So, like, yeah. And how many wears do you get out of those ones? Because I know the Tory Bell, I think it's like what, 30, 30 wears. Yeah, like around. 30 you could reuse years them, and then they start to not stick anymore. They're magnetized mm -hmm. anymore. I've tried a yeah. few. I've tried Glamnetic. I've tried Kiss. I've tried Flat Lash. Um, a, different, a few different brands, but Glamnetic's probably my favorite. Well, hopefully, other girls that are wearing lashes are hearing that, and then <laughs> that's the move. <laughs> exactly. So, anyhow, so as far as um, performing, do you get any kind of anxiety? Because you really put a lot into your, and I couldn't do what you do at all. So I can't imagine like just being able to get up there without having panic attacks prior. Do you? Um, no, I don't get anxious at all. Cause I'm, I'm someone who has anxiety on a regular basis, but I think this for me is like my, all right, this is like about me, like nothing else is kind of in my way. So I don't really mm -hmm. feel anxious when I go on stage. I don't particularly feel nervous. The only thing that does happen though, is that because I have anxiety, I have something called dyspnea, which it makes it sometimes hard for me to breathe. I'm oh. I feel anxious. And so that's not necessarily like the best thing to have. Right. You're a singer who's also like jumping around stage a million yeah. times. Yeah. So that's usually my only like concern. Um, but I don't really feel any ways that you can control it. that. Like if you feel it coming on, do you do you have a way you can control it? Well, yeah. There's a few ways. There's medications for that, but then there's also just like I usually just try to sit down, mellow myself. It's always like um they have like the thing where you do the five senses. So if you think of five things you can see, four things you can touch, three things you can hear two things you can smell and one thing you can taste so like you just basically just do things to kind of just chill yourself out for a little bit right um okay. but if it does happen especially before a show i'm like all right get it together because this is not happening on stage i need to right I need to use my throat i need to sing <laughs> no that's that's good that you shared that that happens to you because there's probably a lot of people out there that have a situation or a condition like that that would never even think of being able to enter the industry that you're in because of that they'd probably oh, yeah. be like oh no i wouldn't be able to do it Right. I mean, one of the most important things to me is I, I'm very open, granted, obviously, with my privacy and my own boundaries and whatnot, mm -hmm. but I try to be very open about my mental health struggles because I understand how difficult it is to even pursue a career like this because there's so mm -hmm. many days where, my gosh, especially with, like, social media and just all these yeah. different components that come with it that make you feel like it, like, almost tears at your own self-worth. So you got to mm -hmm. kind of be balancing out yeah. the passion for what you want to do versus all the outside factors right so yeah i'm like i try to be incredibly open about it and like yeah this is something i go through you know like i don't think it's anything crazy you know that's like i guess my normal life so i don't think of it to be anything yeah incredibly out of the regular no it's good that you're open about it because you probably have a lot to you and uh admire what you do and had any advice to give to someone that wanted to get into the industry or someone that's trying to break their way in what would that advice be Oh my gosh, do your research. <laughs> That's the first thing. Do your research because it's very easy to, to okay, I'm a singer or I'm a producer or I'm a writer or whatever it may be and just want to make craft. And that's great and all, don't get me wrong, but for it to actually come out to be something that garners some type of success, obviously a lot of us want to be able to make money off of what we do. Um, literally do your research. How do you like get to publications? How do you reach out to booking people? How do you book shows? How do you get your music out there? Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to learn the business and learn the game to do anything. Yeah. So you don't have to like the game, but you have to know how to play it. Yeah, so it's, it's true. It's really just doing your research, making your connects, and like, I really think that's it. Just never be afraid to ask questions. Yeah, I'm definitely not afraid. Like that. That's I was the one that got all the gigs for my kids' band, and I was. I, one because I'm not shy at all oh, but it's yeah, funny it's when it comes to things for myself I'm shy but for when it comes to my kids I'm like oh you guys want to do this okay I'll call them we we'll call the president Hi. of the United States okay I'll do it yeah, I love <laughs> yeah. That. I love that. <laughs> but yeah I know it's so true what you just said it's so true so you can't be afraid to ask questions because no one's gonna vouch for you except for you exactly like, you exactly have to, you have to fight for yourself you have no other option especially like when you don't have a team yep. you are your only person mm-hmm it's true it's very it's true really it. Um, I'm willing to be extroverted, I guess. Oh, you, especially like if you're not, and it's just almost like you have to create an alter ego. Like they're I never going to see me I'm again. 
that's the thing. Like when I'm like my government name me, like oh I'm super shy to myself, <laughs> my business. But oh, if it's Luna, that's different. That's very different. I'm like throwing business cards at everybody. I'm being obnoxious uh-huh. about that I'm here and who right. I am. Yeah, because when we met you at the Gibson showroom, it was after you performed, and um, my kids' band's uh, guitarist father came up saying, "Oh, Luna's gonna perform over at the." Uh, he was doing this at his house he's like i asked her she yeah, said she would if she's not working and i'm like thinking to myself that girl is not gonna want to play at your christmas block party <laughs> but then you came and you were talking to us and it was like wow like yeah y'all were so nice you, yeah i mean it was it was like funny because you were so down to earth and just nice nice person and up on that stage you're full of confidence you're full of like you're owning it and then it's mm-hmm. like almost intimidating and you're like, oh, wait, no, this is a nice girl. <laughs> yeah. I think that's always the funniest thing. Like, my music, like, I do everything in color, right? So I look at my music, and it's very, like, dark. It's very black and red and, like, very dark. And then I think of myself as a person, and I'm, like, super, like, bright and bubbly. So it's like, oh, it's a very big dichotomy. But um, that's good. I, <laughs> it's not intimidating. <laughs> it's <laughs> true, though. incredibly nice. Like, I very much remember having that conversation. I was there for a good, like, 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. And I remember I was with my friends. and like, oh, we're going to go grab something or whatever. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll catch up with y'all later. I'm talking to someone. Go. <laughs> like, y'all are so nice. Yeah, no, but like I said, like, that confidence, you have to have that confidence. And you have it. It's admirable. Like, own everything you do. I wish I could be like that. I really do. So yeah, I got to give you kudos for that. I'm 46 years old. Okay, I'm done. So, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll put it on to my kids, my girls. They, they could do it, but I'll just live in their, their shadow. <laughs> but, bad. um, you know, so like, all right. So I saw you perform some songs down at Gibson showroom. And then I saw you the last live, which you played there what, three times at revolution live. Right. Three. Okay. So are there any of those that I have seen you perform or you, I did it that you hate performing any of those songs? Any of the songs? Um, hmm, that's interesting. You just perform them because you know some people like them or whatever, but you're just so over oh, it. Oh, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I really like my songs, right? I really like mm-hmm. the song Bite, but there was a particular show I had to do. It was here in New York, though, and I didn't have Bite. I had, like, three other songs. Mm-hmm. The person's like, I really like Bite. Can you switch this one song out? And I was like, I was like okay, I guess. Like, that's fine. But... I like performing by, I like performing, Lunaphobia is always my favorite song to perform, mm-hmm. but I just get mad out of breath, but any song that I hate, I don't know. I think it just used to be weird, um, it depends who's like there to see me. Right, okay. Um, cause you just feel the crowd out. Well, not even that, but you know, it's kind of awkward sometimes that the person you wrote all these like mean songs about is there. <laughs> <laughs> a little awkward i'm not gonna act like it isn't you know but aside from that no like all my songs i enjoy them i very much curate my set list to be more fun and energetic well that's good there are that's good other songs i have but they're not as you know energetic so i'd rather have right. something that if the crowd doesn't know who i am something that's a bit more um i guess digestible for them right well that's that's cool that um someone in new york knew about your music or was requesting saying oh yeah i've been there that long have you how long have you been yeah. there now Next week it'll be about five months. See, that's impressive. That yeah, yeah I already like, here. That's not awesome. Right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm what made you move really up there? Just music, or yeah, just music. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So I just decided this is something I've always wanted to do, and I figured, you know mm-hmm. what? It's time to I don't know make some type of change. Yeah. Did you go by? Oh yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, nothing scares me. <laughs> daughter wants to do that i'm like do you understand that the money in your bank you'll last two days that's it yeah. <laughs> you're not gonna it's not cheap oh like, it's very true i got incredibly lucky and i found an apartment on craigslist which i'm i'm like a walking billboard for craigslist okay okay everyone always thinks it's like incredibly fraudy and scammy which it kind of is but i've gotten a lot of good things out of it so i got my apartment like my apartment's like ridiculously cheap for what it is um, and I plan, like, I'm a big over planner, so I planned out getting a job before I even moved out That's here. Good. And, like, I had myself all set up, so the question was just, okay, I just need to drive up here and move. Right. And that was that. Wow. But yeah, I was like, so, like yeah. I, my accounts have never been, like, an overdraft or anything like that up until I moved here. But oh, that geez. was, like, you know, the first month yeah. and whatnot when I was trying to get myself set up, but everything kind of mellowed mm-hmm. out. And, 
I mean, that's just like the process, you know. That's what happens. Yeah, exactly. If you're shooting for your dreams. That's what you have to. Yeah. You have to do. You know? But yeah. okay. So other than music, what other hobbies do you have? Hobbies and interests. Um, hobbies and interests. Let's see. I'm really into fashion. Like mm -hmm. I would love to one day do like a fashion line or even just like modeling. I used to really want to be a model. Like okay. when I was younger, I think a lot of my, my, all my interests have always been more in the creative realm, but I used to be like, I mean, I want to be a singer. I want to be a model. I want to be a singer. I want to be this. I want to, and always like back and forth between singer and like something right. else. Um, but I'm really into fashion. Um, I'm really into pole dancing. I'm very like obvious about that. Like I have my pole literally like yeah. three feet away from me right here. I could <laughs> never do that. I to hold myself up. That's what I thought at first too, but it's a great workout. You build that's, so yeah. much strength doing it. So much strength. Oh my gosh. Um, but that's usually just all my, all, I don't know, all my hobbies are very music related. Like if mm -hmm. I'm not in my house making music, I'm at a concert, you know? So yeah, that's usually like the bulk of my personality. <laughs> right. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. So um, when you make your music, what makes you other than like breakups and stuff? Because I know a lot of your about breakups but what other <laughs> things make you feel passionate within the music um i don't know it kind of it kind of just comes to me a lot of the time um like i'll just be in random spots like i'll be on the train and i'll have like these great ideas and i'll make five songs like straight up or i'll go months without writing anything mm -hmm. so it really just varies i just want something that actually makes me i don't know so that's like a pungent feeling i guess pungent's more for scent but nevertheless like <laughs> yeah. you want something that like sticks out to you I don't know. I find that most of my stuff does come from does come from pain. So that means that could be breakups. That could be other types of hurt. Um, it's just a matter of what perspective do I want to take on it. Because I don't necessarily right. always want to make sad songs for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. However, most of my songs, or at least the things that I think are my best writing, stem from that kind of thing. Right. Right. Well, sad songs sell. So. Oh yeah. How <laughs> yeah, they do? Yeah. Of course they do. You know how many people are sad? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, it was a whole entire people? country at this point. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so what what do you feel is the best decision that you made? At Let's see. I think, oh, that's a good question. Hold on. There are quite a few things. I think the main two that I would name is A, doing all the production myself. Mm -hmm. um, initially, I started doing the production just for the sake of I didn't have resources to pay somebody right. or to learn or do anything like that. So that's how I started doing it alone. Um, but at this point, I take a lot more pride and passion in my music because I'm the one who does it. On top of the fact that I'm a woman in production, that's already right. so scarce. Um, and I do think the second thing is just making those connections. Like that initial connection I made to play the Ripple Effect show, mm -hmm. the, the first time I even did the Gibson, did Revolution. The way that that came about was so weird. It was. I met somebody at a concert mm -hmm. and it was like the weirdest thing. We met at this concert and she was like fighting over her spot with some other girl. So I just defended her. Cause like, yeah, I feel you. And we became friends and she was working with ripple at the time. And that's how mm -hmm. I got to know all this stuff. And through that, that opened up so many doors for me. And that was just because yeah. I just decided to talk to one person. That's amazing. I know. And it's and really you were being the good on the end of it. Yeah, like that, that it was well, a good <laughs> deed that got you. I mean, I'm just so introverted, so usually I would have been like, all right, like, that really sucks, but I'm just kind of, like, mind my business. I don't want to get yep. involved, but I was like, yo, you know, like, they were fighting over the spot. It was, like, a weird situation, but after that, like, we got to talking, and she's like, yeah, I'm a photographer, this and that. Like, her name is Valerie. Oh, uh, she, album cover. I hired her to Love do, um, uh, yeah, she, they, she did my kids' band's pictures. I, she's great. Yes. Yes. Oh, love Valerie. Oh, my gosh, but that's how mm -hmm. I met her. It was the craziest thing, and then she sent me the thing about Ripple. She's like, oh, you should sign up for this, and I was like, cool. And we've been like such great friends since, and that's how that whole thing came about. Like, if it was that's not fun. for me being at the right place at the right time, right time. even bothering to speak to her. Oh yeah, that's exactly that's what this is. For <laughs> oh, I think I'm funny. It was a ripple effect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> And me, obviously. So, um, so your family, you say you moved up to New York by yourself. Is right. very supportive of what you do. And um, I've seen you post like your mother and stuff on right. Instagram with you. And so what kind of um, support? Right. I mean, <clears throat> they're more so on the stake of like, you can do whatever you want to do so long as like you're not harming yourself or other yeah. people, which is also kind of like the mantra that I carry on myself. Mm -hmm. um, 
So yeah, they've been incredibly supportive on my move. They were helping me out every single like when I was on the train moving here, when I was doing like all the you know all the bits and pieces. Like every few days they'll call me and they'll be like, "Is everything good? Are you eating? Are you doing X Y Z?" I'm like, "Oh, I'm good. Like I'm I'm chilling, you know." But no, they're supportive on that. Um, so yeah, I mean, whenever I go back down to Miami, like I was, you know, I know I have a good support there. That's good. They used to not be like that, but you know, oh. time develops. Yeah. They're probably seeing that you're making a name for yourself and like yeah. maybe she was right, you know, like, let's just let her yeah. see how this works out sort of thing, you know, and now um, I saw an interview a while ago and you had said, I think I heard it this way, that you snuck out of your house the first time to play the, fir the, rip the Revolution Live Ripple Effect the first time. Is that yeah. so true? <laughs> oh my God. How could you get to perform? I would be a nervous wreck. Oh no! <laughs> You're like I'm out. I'll just deal with it later if I get caught. Every single <laughs> show I did before I turned 18, which was maybe a good like three of them, three or four of them, they were all snuck. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Do your do, do do your parents know this? Well, they know now. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, man, I'll edit there this out. There, oh no, you're good. They were, you know, they were like really strict. Um, they were mm -hmm. like daughters, you know. There's. There's all the stigma that comes with just having daughters, yeah. especially in my I'm family, a, you know. To five do daughters. Oh, so, yeah, I'm the yeah so we know. Too, you know? Yep. And I'm, I'm a bit more rambunctious than my sister. So. <laughs> uh, so, my parents are very much like, all right, like, you know, you don't want to, we don't want, you know, put you in all, any situation that will make you susceptible to getting kidnapped or this and that. Right, right. Like, overly protective. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. I'm going to go to work. And <laughs> I put on my, <laughs> I'd put on my work uniform. <laughs> And I'd go to work, like my parents would drop me off, or I'd Uber to work, oh and then I would God. change in the bathroom. And it became such a thing, because I did this to film a few music videos as well, like, right. I would just always say that I was at work. And it became a thing where my coworkers would see me, like, are you actually working today? <laughs> so I'm like, no, 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 I'm going somewhere. I'll have a <laughs> and I would change in the bathroom, oh my God. and, like, my friend, or I'd Uber or whatever to the venue, and, and then I'd be there, and then my scapegoat at night, because obviously I'd be out late, and uh -huh. I'm going to sleep over at someone's house, and I would right. do that. Right. And then the next morning, I'd come back with my work uniform. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Fully thought through. Fully thought oh, through. Oh, 100% thought through. I'm very calculated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew otherwise my parents wouldn't have let me done it. They wouldn't have let right. me do it at all. Yeah. And yeah. I wasn't going to miss that opportunity on top of the fact that it's something that I wanted to do. Forget about it being, like, career motivated, but I just wanted right. to do that. And, yeah, you really have to make it big now story you have to tell for the rest of your life oh, yeah. <laughs> no one day my dad found out he's like oh so you weren't going to tell me that you played at this festival or you or that you played at this venue and i was like oh my god <laughs> i was like so oh. how'd you find out <laughs> oh my god yeah that's that was my question i guess ripple was doing like facebook ads at the time and i guess <laughs> yeah they were <gasps> and my mom was like she told me like a few months after it happened. She's like, so you never told me about this. And she pulls up a Facebook ad and it's my picture. Oh, that's hysterical. Oh, yeah. So, um, that, that is hysterical. No, that <laughs> I probably would have gotten discouraged with the whole thing just because I would have talked about everything, like leaving, getting caught. I wouldn't, I would have been fired from everything though because my performance would have been so awful because I'd have been <laughs> such a nervous wreck. That, yeah. No, I mean, I was anxious. Don't get me wrong at the fact that I'd be caught. But once I actually got to the venue, I was like, I'm like, let's say they do show up. What are they going to do? I'm already here. <laughs> <laughs> that was my logic. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, speaking of like being anxious <laughs> and stuff, what do you do? Like if, or it may not, but if you were performing and you're getting like a negative response from the crowd or you feel like you're losing the crowd, what do you do? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's happened times where you have those crowds are incredibly small, so you only got like mm -hmm. two people paying attention, or you have the ones yeah. that are full, but you can tell they're not necessarily there for you. Mm -hmm. At that point, I just try to be super immersive. Yeah. Um. So like, there was a show I played, and the venue was a church, which was like the randomest venue to have, and I, I wasn't aware that it was a church until I got there. <laughs> and you know, I don't think my music is very, <laughs> I don't think that's the right setting for it. But nevertheless, oh my um, god. <laughs> I mean, I was like, I heard everyone was sitting down on the pews. Like, it looked like Sunday service. And I was like, all right, this is great. Y'all got to get up, get some steps. And, you know, I had people, like, trying to, I don't know, just get people riled up because everyone was just so lax. And, you know, at that point, like, energy. if it's not there, I'll make my own energy. But I'd much rather feed off the energy that's already in the room. Right, right. Um, oh, yeah. So just always, like, getting people immersed and actually involved. Always. 
Oh my god. That's funny, a church. That is funny. A church! <laughs> a church. <laughs> I'm dying. Yeah, and, oh. yeah, no, it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny, though. That is. Mm -hmm. um, what other type of musicians were there? Oh, no, the event was really cool. Um, it was a bunch of different people. They had some hip-hop artists, some R&B okay. artists, a lot of singer-songwriters. So it was just really cool. I just, I don't think any of us were aware what the venue was. They just gave us a right. And when I Googled it, like, no, nothing came up. So I was like, oh, okay, like, whatever. Um, if it's a weird alley, then I guess it is. And I'll take my phone up. Yep, that happens. <laughs> and I was like, this is so architecturally beautiful. And I walk in, I'm like, that makes sense. It's a church. <laughs> <laughs> this red. Is you see the velvet red on the pews and one? I'm like, yeah, it's the church. All right, cool. Oh, my God. So um, what is your dream collaboration? Who would you want to collaborate with? Oh, my gosh. There are quite a few people. Um, I would absolutely love, love, love to write with Banks. I think she is, she's like my favorite songwriter of all time. Okay. The way that she puts her words together, the way that she speaks so freely and authentically. I just love everything about her music, everything about the way she writes. The other person, which this really isn't a surprise, but I need to collaborate with Bad Bunny. I need that to happen. <laughs> you hear that, Bad Bunny? <laughs> yeah, like, we'll, we'll, we'll have to tag her in this. We gotta have we gotta have all the Puerto Ricans in one song. I think that would just like shake the earth. I think it'd be great. I want that That's to happen funny. so badly. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll work on it for you. Oh I'll yeah, if you, if you can make it happen. Right. I will. I will. <laughs> I'll tell you when my kids. Be I I told each band member, let me know what your dream venue is to play at, and Max said Revolution Live, and I laughed. I was like, yeah, that's never happening. And then it happened three and times. Look. Yeah. So, yeah, hey, I'm on the Bad Bunny mission. Thank you. <laughs> no, that really is, like, one of my favorite things about playing Revolution. Like, every time I go, like, Saving Harold's also there, I'm like, yay! Like, I feel like we're in this together. It feels so cute and wholesome. Yeah, I know you it. guys are doing it together. That's... I know. So, you know, you're Puerto Rican. Um, obviously, you speak Spanish then. D do you do any Spanish? Or, yeah, or would you ever so put a Spanish cool. album together? Oh, yeah, definitely. I have a few songs right now that have, like, tidbits in Spanish. I only have one okay. song out right now that's, like, fully in Spanish. Um, but recently, I released a remix of Fuck Me Up. And, okay. one is, like, parts of it are in Spanish. So oh, okay. Um, but, yeah, no, I would love, love, love to, like, fully dive into making a complete Spanish record. I think that'd be so dope. Yeah. I love, I don't know what there's, I, I just <laughs> love the sound of it, so... <laughs> Yeah. That, listen, as long as you feel it sometimes, you don't even need to understand. You just feel it. That's yeah, no, you do. When, um, before Saving Harold, Mackenzie was in um, this, other, and mm -hmm. the singer was Latin, and they played one Latin song, and Nick was in it with them. Nick and Mackenzie and the bassist, none of them knew what she was singing, but uh -huh. favorite song that they performed, because she was Latin, and it, would just, it just flowed so perfectly for right. her. I loved it, and it, I, yeah, I would never even attempt. I know the word. I don't know what they mean, but I would never attempt to sing yeah. it for you. So, yeah. at this point, music transcends language. Like you see how big K-pop is right now. Like, yeah, people who listen to K-pop don't understand a single word what they're mm -mm. saying, but it yeah. just sounds good. It feels good. It feels right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, same. So same concept. Who is your biggest musical musician, other than the bad uh, one? <laughs> um, I would say. I would probably say Halsey or Banks in terms of okay. like actual influences. I find that. The direction that they're taking their music, the sound that they they keep pushing, writing is everything mm -hmm. about that seems very much like something I would want to do. Okay. And I saw Banks in concert a few years ago, and I just watched the whole set, and I was like, "This, this is it. This is this right here is the image." Right. Right. Um, those two are probably really high up for me. There are quite a lot of people. I'm inspired by so many different women in music, but I think those are the two like off the top of my mm -hmm. head. I will always like always vouch for. So, don't you have a couple of diamond tattoos, or? I sure do. <laughs> I, have, so, I have quite a few. Let me see. Yeah. I have a few now. Cause I got, I think I got two more a few months ago. My very first tattoo was her. Like, oh, well, okay. not her, but I have like a diamond on my right, right there. Yeah. I have that. I have another one here. I have quite a few. Yeah, I think I have like seven of them for her. And then I think oh, I have like wow. four, four or five for Halsey. So I, oh, okay. I'm just catching up. Yeah, most yeah. of the tattoos are music related. Okay, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all pretty much music related. Very few of them aren't, but yeah, that's just 
that's like the biggest thing for me in my life. So that's it makes nice. sense for that yeah. to be just scribbled all over my skin. Yeah, if you're putting something there forever, it might as well be something that makes sense. Because yeah. I have stick men. I mean, <gasps> well, <laughs> what's that mean? <laughs> I just like stick men. And then nice. Mackenzie, her first tattoo um, was my first tattoo, which was the stick men. So that's, that's yeah, so that's. Aww. At least that's it means cute. something, right? <laughs> yeah, my mom said she would never get a tattoo at all. And I told her, I was like, what if I was dying? And this is my dying wish for you to get a tattoo to remember me by. It could be a dot. I don't care what it is, but the point is you get one for me. And she's like, you wouldn't know you're dead. Oh. <laughs> so that's cute. <laughs> that's so funny. I'm like, mommy, we, we saw this girl the other day on, on social media. She had like these little tiny, tiny hearts like all over. It looked like little freckles everywhere. Oh, cool. I'm not about it, but Mackenzie wasn't quite sure how she felt about it either. We were like, I don't know. So yeah, that's an interesting concept. I like mine to be yeah. big, or at least like portable. Yeah, exactly. If you're doing it, you might as well do it. Yeah. So as as far as the local scene, um, you got the taste of New York and better for you which one do you like better what's the difference mm, i think i mean as of right now it's a little bit hard to answer that just for the sake of in miami i spent a good a good amount of time like building that network building those connections yeah learning about the venues learning who i should talk to who i shouldn't um so i developed a good know of what was happening versus here in new york i mean i think it'll be more fruitful for me moving forward once i do get a better grasp of what's here for yeah me. um so it's a little bit hard because as of right now, I could easily say, yeah, Miami, just because I have the connections and I know where to reach out to. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I do think New York, once I get the grasp, will be much more fruitful because here's a better scene for pop music. Miami's not really built for that. They're not ready. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, they're not. For a while there, it started almost like turning into like a good place to go to for like acting and music. Mm -hmm. And then it was just kind of like, yeah, it was, I feel like this all the way. A I feel like a lot of people who are like pursuing more rap music careers or like even Latin music music yeah. careers have a better time in Miami. Um, but yeah, I think it just depends. Depends what kind of music you're pursuing, what exactly you're trying to do. Right. So that's what that is. So what is the crazy story from any of your shows that you've ever had happen? Hmm. Or that you've seen? Church? Yeah. Besides, <laughs> I don't know if you're going to be able to top that one actually. <laughs> Um. Oh, let me see. I have to really like dig deep my memory because I've done a few shows now. Um. I think. I think something that's always funny. I guess it's not necessarily crazy, but I always just think it's funny. Every time I do a show, without fail, the people who are there that aren't necessarily like my friends or whatnot always mm -hmm. assume I'm like a million years older than I am. Like this happens very consistently mm -hmm. in my shows. Mm -hmm. Um. So there's always that, but that's not necessarily crazy. I don't know. I'm trying to think. Well, my first few shows before I had tattoos, I used to always um, stencil on tattoos with like eyeliner. Oh. Um, so that was that was a thing for a while. Like if you look at the pictures, it was just mad inconsistent because every time it was a different tattoo in a different place. So uh huh. It like I was getting like constant tattoos. <laughs> um, and they look. If I look at them now, I'm like, ooh, that looks really bad. But you know, efforts huh? were made. Oh, well, crazy stuff. I think the first Revolution show I did, that was the first time I performed Lunophobia. And Lunophobia hadn't even been out yet. Uh -huh. And I remember bringing somebody on stage to do that. To I remember that. The video. Because at uh -huh. that point, the video hadn't even been filmed or anything like that. But I knew what I wanted the video to be. And I was mm -hmm. like, I want to beat up a man in a chair. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> Let me find somebody on stage who I feel like would be a good sport. And I'm not going to beat them up per se, but you know, it'll be close enough to the real thing. Mm -hmm. And I remember that was really, really fun because I was kind of anxious. I've never had somebody on stage with me before. Right. Like, so different. Like, that's probably like the craziest thing I can think of. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not like a party person. I wish my, my answer was more interesting. No. The kid that you pulled up on stage happened to go to high school with Mackenzie. And apparently he was like a what? huge introvert. Like, so I was like, poor Luna's tearing this poor kid. <laughs> no, it's crazy because I know them from Twitter. I've oh, that's so funny. Like a while back, um, small world. Yeah, yeah, we had interacted maybe at a few concerts and whatnot before, but like we weren't necessarily like close friends or then. Now we're like pretty good. Like they live in New York. That's so, like, so chill. funny. Um, but I remember I was like, all right, this person seems like a goodness. Like, all right, this is what's gonna happen. That's crazy. I didn't. Uh -huh. know. <laughs> 
that's so funny yeah, because world. he was like it's such as really as large as it is it's so small so tiny so tiny yeah wow. so as far as fans and people and stuff do you have any groupies anyone that's ever like kind of like scared you anything like that i'm blessed nobody has scared me not yet at least um but i mean you always have those people after the shows who dm you and they're like yeah. He will really kill you with some talent to this and then i'm like all right thanks i guess and i like try to ignore it but it's mm -hmm. persistent yeah they are but no i haven't had anybody to make me feel like uncomfortable or scared mm -hmm. out of yet so that's the well that's thing. good that's yeah, good the so fingers crossed it stays like that yeah um as far as local bands who's your favorite local band you can tell me like south florida and new york if you have one up there already um that you want to shout out to oh hell yeah so like most of my knowledge does fall in the Miami uh, mm -hmm. Miami circuit. Like, absolutely love, love, love Nia Ray. This isn't necessarily a band. Um, she's more of an R&B pop artist. She's okay. absolutely super talented, super, super gifted singer. Like, her music, is, it hits every single time for me. Right. Absolutely love that. Love Wednesday. Shout out Wednesday. Oh, yeah, hey. you got to. He's going to be on. I'm going to have him on in, in March sometime, so I'm excited about nice. that also. Yeah. I love Wednesday. Wednesday's music hits so good. Yeah. Yeah, I know. There are so many people. Um, who's this other person? Oh, my friend Mati. Matias Poro. Fire. He produces, too. Like, when I tell okay. you, he, like, the trifecta. This man is the singer. He's the writer. He's the producer. He's the director. He does his videos, like, top tier. Every single thing he does is absolutely phenomenal. Um gifted gifted and he's engineered the project i'm releasing next week oh okay so yeah he does everything when i tell you that man is talented we're talented we also have imperium the first oh my gosh the song by imperium it's called high mm -hmm. absolutely fire it's like a super like sultry to get done but like mm -hmm. sad it's like a perfect blend of all the things I right do. oh it's great. there's just so many local artists that and that's why i started this because mm -hmm. there's just so many so talented that really should be no they aren't like i i just don't understand it it's like i go and i see some and i'm like god how have they not been found yet like i don't understand it's just a waste like but you know it, it, like you said earlier it's right place right time right place right time so, and also yeah. you got to make it the right place right time Let's you're right yeah yeah you it's for real <laughs> that is yeah, true i mean like anytime i think of anybody i will definitely send them your wakes i want if everybody could eat, that's that's the goal right there. Why is I don't understand why the music industry is incredibly too competitive. It's just yeah. too much. Everybody yeah. can eat, everybody can celebrate together, you know? Yeah, it's so, true. I appreciate true. you doing this. This is so cool. No, I that you came on because um, I, I had a list of people that I knew I wanted. You were one of them, Young Fiction, Wednesday, Age. Like, I, Paige, I wanted, oh, God, that voice. So, oh, yeah. yeah. But, um, so, all right. So, when I first... There's so many, so I'm gonna just keep doing it, and hopefully someone will like it, you know, yeah. pass it along, and people will see, and they'll be like, "Oh, who's that, Luna?" So when I first met you, though, you had no tattoos. How many do you have now? Thirty-eight. Holy crap! That's. I'm I've only figured. been tattooed for almost three years now. I know. That's one a month. All right, how many? All right, it's bad. Okay, twenty for thirty-six. It's one a month, almost more than one a month, oh, right? That's, well, that's not how I do it. <laughs> I'm in bulk. I do oh. in bulk, so I'll sit through and I'll get like maybe ten at a time or like. Oh my god! Mm -hmm. Cheaper that way, it hurts less. Healings all at once. Like the True. most I did in one session, I did twelve in a session. Oh yeah, no, that's like no. Okay. I'm that person. Nope, not me. No, I I got one here, and mm -hmm. it's holding my hand. I was nearly seizing. But then there was like, it was weird. It was like, it was that spot's bad. Yeah. And then it would move like a hair and it was fine. And then I'm like, okay, that's good. And then it's like, oh shit, they moved again. Oh God. It was, I was sweating. My makeup was yeah. down to here. I was like, oh my God, I'm too old for this. Like the tattoo I have here is the only time I ever use numbing cream. And I felt like I didn't punk. Use... Oh, I if I had punk. known about it, I would have done that. Well, I sat through for a good like two hours yeah. and eventually like it kept hurting and the guy kept having to stop and I was like yo like I was like he's like do you want numbing cream I was like no we're not using numbing cream <laughs> and then after, like 30 minutes I was like all right in that choice just just, just run oh because like I'm telling you Luna, there was times where I felt like I was gonna pass out I was like this is this is just awful pain but yeah, that oh it was awful it was awful wow. 
Yeah, that spot's bad. Yeah. So, all right. So you moved five miles. Do you have a significant other or no time for that right now? No time for that. No time for that right now. I think yeah. I'd rather focus on my music. That's what I was doing last year. And I feel like that ended up being very helpful for me, both mentally right. and career-wise. So I think I'm going to keep on that train. Yeah. Yeah. That's just... And so what is the longest relationship that you have had and supportive of your music or did that get in the way because, you know, they didn't understand? Um... It was almost five years. Oh my God! Wow. Yeah, almost five okay. years. Um, it it, it kind of played an odd role in my relationship. Um, I think. I almost feel like <laughs> I'm just gonna sound mad cocky. I almost feel like Taylor Swift. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, you know that she's she's writing about her problems. She's writing mm-hmm. about all these things that happened to her, and mm-hmm. you know, obviously that. I, I get why that would ruffle feathers. I, I understand mm-hmm. it on both ends, but nevertheless, like, if things don't happen, I wouldn't have write, written right. about them. So it kind of goes back and forth. Um, and trying to be respectful to your partner, but also mm-hmm. understanding that you deserve to use your music or whatever your art is as an outlet. Mm-hmm. Um, and you would have to yeah. really be confident to update you. That's just the oh, way. Oh, hell yeah! That's oh, because See, if not, that's just, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's... forget about the music. One of the issues that I have found is, especially since I started pole dancing, is that, like, people, whenever they are trying to, like, spit game or they are trying to date or anything like that, everyone's always very intrigued that I pull at first, and everyone's, like, very, like, supportive of it and interested in it. But the second, I don't know, I guess it becomes threatened because now they're like, oh, wait, mm-hmm. this isn't just for me. Yeah. This is initially just for you to begin with. But <laughs> I, find that, I find that that's the thing that causes more problems. I mean, as of right now. Yep. I don't know. That might, that might I can see that, yeah. So I'm like, yeah. if you can't handle being with somebody who's incredibly, con- like, super confident, like, just, for lack of a better term, just a bad bitch, then don't date a bad bitch. Exactly. Exactly. Pretty simple. Yep. <laughs> They're going to. Because there's nothing wrong with you. It's just yeah. them. That, yeah. That's the th- and I'm someone who's, like, incredibly loud and open from the jump. So, like, you're aware of what you're getting into. Like, you can't mm-hmm. go, well, you, you weren't like this at first. Like, you know exactly that this is the kind of life I lead. This is the kind of things that I put out into the world. So yeah. You can either be cool with that and support that and move with me mm-hmm. or move to the side. Exactly. It's really one or the other. It's good that you, you feel that way, though, because a lot of girls would may just be like, okay, you know what? I won't do it anymore. And, oh, no. But as so. Honey. Yeah, no, that's good. So, what's the most yeah. desperate thing you've ever done to get a date? Anything desperate? Like I used to okay. do drive-bys. I was <laughs> drive-bys, <laughs> but long, like for a long. Time, <laughs> I drove by my husband. Yeah, uh-huh. poor guy. See, hmm, I don't think I've done anything particularly desperate. Granted, I've only been like, I I haven't really been somebody that's dated a lot. I feel like that's a big misconception. Like, when people look at me, they think that I like date a lot, or I mm-hmm. think, it's like I really don't. Because not only am I super introverted and I say to myself, but also like I don't know. Well, you were in a five-year relationship, also. So well, yeah. I mean, that's date. Too. Hello, I'm 20. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I think that's definitely part of it. Also, is the fact that like if something comes to me and it feels right, then that's great. But I'm never gonna right. go out of my way to seek something. But mm-hmm. listen. <laughs> Ah, I'm just I'm someone who's very passionate and very loving and kind and affectionate so I'll be writing poems for people I'm writing uh-huh. really nice things. I'm that person right. and I don't necessarily do it to like get something back but you know that would be nice but I don't necessarily do it for that Right. and then I'll write like all this beautiful nice like Shakespearean stuff and they'll be like that's really nice thanks <laughs> What the heck? Did you not read it? Do you need to reread it? I know. I'm like, Whoa, I just wrote you two whole stanzas. <laughs> no, that hurts my feelings. Like, I'm a big gift giver too. So, like, no, it's bad. It's bad. I'm a really big gift giver. I'm really big on like words of affirmation. So, I'll be writing cards, right. letters. I'll be finding uh-huh. gifts. Like, really small things. Like, if I'm at the store and I see something that reminds me of you, I'll be like, oh, okay. But that's cool. Is that your love language? Is that, um, is it, we're- is it um giving it's more words of affirmation yeah mm-hmm. but um i mean yeah it makes sense <laughs> but no i that's cute like if you're in a five-year relationship and you're yeah. people get but like i've been dating you for a month why do i want to buy you like why do i want to true buy you stuff? 
that's the awkward stage where it's like, okay, or starting like at the beginning of January, Valentine's Day is next month. It's like, am I getting this person something or like, because it's almost like strange to even get a card at that point. It's yeah, like, I mean, what, what is that card going to say? Or even like around birthdays, just don't start yeah. dating somebody around holidays. I just exactly. <laughs> Sorry, I can't date you yet. Uh, just, it would yeah, wait. give me like two weeks. <laughs> because then you got to think about it let's say things do work out and then you know now your anniversary is on your birthday Sorry, <laughs> my birthday is my birthday yeah, that's, <laughs> that is so funny though but it's yeah. true there's so it's much so truth so in that true. and that you is... know what they're just afraid to say but i'll say it don't date me around my birthday. <laughs> it's March that, 1st. Is so don't date me that is so funny <laughs> Get interested in Luna? Pick her up around June. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my god. So okay, so what is the biggest mess up you've ever done on stage in front of a live audience? Oh my god. I don't think people even notice. I mess up my words all the time. <laughs> I think everybody does that though. I do and it depends how it goes. So some songs I might just like mentally, I guess I realized I messed up, so I just kind of picked up from the last verse or something to mm -hmm. like mix the verses up and whatnot. But I think the last time I did a show, I performed Lunaphobia, and for whatever reason, I blanked out. So I just did like a good run of O's for like a good three bars. <laughs> I was like, "What am I saying?" <laughs> the drop. I don't know what's happening. Oh god. And yeah, yeah, that happens a lot. Depending what shoes I'm wearing, I might fall. However, I am a very graceful faller. So it almost looks on purpose. I don't know how you wear the shoes you wear. I, I don't know. I just like feels this high or too much for me. <laughs> that high. Yeah. Oh no. my. Yeah, that's too short. I'm five yeah, one. I'm trying to be tall. Well, I'm five nine, yeah. so I'm trying to be short. Well, yeah, there you go. You're a stallion. Hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's exactly the problem. <laughs> so funny. So um the songs that you've written about your significant others. Do they know that the about them, or yeah, yeah they do. Okay. <laughs> I'm that super so loud and super honest. I tell them straight up every single time, like, "Yo, you want to know something funny? You want to know something crazy? <laughs> Check out track number nine. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my gosh, has it caused any problems where they're, where they just are so that song being about them, or, or are they like, um, "Yeah, that's right, it's all true." For the most part, it hasn't caused too many problems. Like, you'll have some people who, like, they're really good sports about it. They're like, hey, like, you know, this song is kind of, like, lyrically kind of mean, but hey, it's kind of slaps. I'm like, thank you, right, thank you. You, you respect it. Um, then you'll have people who are like, man, like, I wish this wasn't, like, publicly, but you're mm -hmm. not wrong. Like, this happened. Right, so right. Of, yeah, but you know what? No one else knows it's about them, so if it's public right. or not, it's just the two. That's what I'm saying. Like, very few people will actually know who these particular songs are about, which would obviously be myself, the person who it's about, and like maybe like a friend or two of mine who are like actually helping with like like Mati, for example, who helps me a lot with the engineering or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But aside from that, like, unless you're telling a million and one people, I'm not telling a million and one people. Right. Don't know what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. Um. It varies. Your video um, at, for FMU, the girls that are in it, are they just your close friends or are they just yeah. founder? Okay. No, those are my friends. Those are my friends. They're both actually singers as well. So it's okay. Bailey and then we have Juliana Mera. Super, okay. super talented, the both of them. Um, and I was like, listen, y'all are not only like my good friends, but y'all are also super hot. Do y'all want to dance in my video? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, like, yes. No. Okay. It was a good video. Good video. Also directed yeah. by Matias Parlick. Like I'm telling you, that man does it all. It's crazy. That's awesome. And he's down in South Florida. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. All right. Yes. Yeah, um, cool. Have to get his name out there and get him busy. Oh, yeah. Not if he's... Oh, he's probably already busy, but... So, who is your celebrity crush before? Like, when you were younger, who is it now? Let's see how it's changed and evolved. It hasn't changed much. Oh, it hasn't? Oh. <laughs> yeah, when I was really young, I was obsessed with Liz Gills. Liz I don't know Gills who that is. Played, she played Jade in Victorious. That's where, like, a Oh, of yes, movie. yes. You know, she's a little gothic with a little blue yes, highlights she's, and Yes, whatnot. yes. And I was also very into Jade from the, the live-action Bratz movie. Who I've never seen followed. that. 
Oh, I was obsessed with the Brad's live action movie. Oh my god, I still watch it now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a work. It's cinematic art. It's so bad right. that it's good. Like when I was younger, I really thought it was good. Now I'm like, it's bad that it's good. But <laughs> the girl who played Jade, um, also, you know, goth aesthetic blue mm-hmm. highlights. So yep. I have a very clear, very clear vision. Now though, um, I mean, Bad Bunny. Hello. That's <laughs> Next. I'm working on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I love Kehlani. Oh, my gosh. Kehlani is absolutely yep. stunning. Alexa Demi, like from Euphoria. Oh. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's that's the like hottest show going on right now, huh? Yeah, yeah. It just started again last week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they just aired. Every Sunday, they air a new episode. So right now, they just aired episode two. Okay. Alexa Demi is one of the girls on there, and she's absolutely stunning. Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny's always on the list. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, man. <laughs> I'm going to play a little game. Rapid fire. You can't think. You have to just say exactly what comes. All right. We'll start oh, off easy. God. I'm not good at this kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm letting you know that right now. You'll be good. You'll be good. They're not hard. They're going to be very easy. Okay. So okay. polka dots or stripes? Stripes. I would say polka dots. Not that. But. All right. Blondes or brunettes? Brunette. Okay. <laughs> Texting or know. talking? <laughs> 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 oh. Alrighty. All right, Favorite going. holiday? Uh, Valentine's Day. Fill in the blank. Machine Gun Kelly is Megan Fox's toy. <laughs> That's great. Yo, <laughs> I, saw them, I, I was standing outside the VMAs this year, and I saw oh. them together. Like, and they were really cute. And I was like, wow, it really looks like Megan Fox is like just holding him as a purse. That is so That's funny. Great. So, are you on the Megan Fox wagon like everybody else? Oh, love Sorry. her. Do you, oh, I just don't get it. <laughs> oh, it drives you know me nuts because I will admit it's the confidence. That's that's oh, yeah. what it, confidence is everything, and it's like making her out like she's got it, that resting bitch face, and it's ah. Oh. It really is just a very um, just a very sultry way about her. But you know what it is. I mean, Jennifer's Body, that movie came out in, like, what, 2008, 2009? Mm-hmm. That's the one that really, like, reeled a lot of people. Yeah. Out. Yep. That movie, it's great. It's blood. It's killing. It's, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I, I'll eventually get over this whole thing, but I just, I ask everybody, I'm like, I <laughs> see it. Like, I, 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 I guess I just, I don't know what, and then when people make one person out to be the most cool in the world it just drives me oh, nuts yeah. unless it's true like i like jayla she's okay but she's like this normal looking lady but if you put her up next to shakira there's absolutely she can't hold a candle like that but that's the way i feel i just think shakira's right. absolutely like oh but jayla if i walk next to her in this in the mall like i'd be like hey, some lady like, i would have i mean but oh my God. has her own opinion you know what else right, right, right. I just All right. like women like that's a, that's the main yeah. thing. You can just feel the confidence in the aura. Cause someone can look good, mm-hmm. but if they don't walk like they feel like they yeah. look good, it won't hit. Oh, I'll tell you, I've I've known this since I was young, like before I, when I was going into bars with fake IDs. My sister, uh-huh. I mean, her confidence was like nothing ever mm-hmm. and i would walk into the bar like this free spirit, like hey everybody, you know, like because I just never ever yeah. glistened that. She walk in after me five minutes after and she just walk in not say a word every guy it didn't matter if they were holding their girlfriend's hands they dropped hands and it was like the queen just walked into the bar i tried to be that way i just never was i was more of that like free like let's everybody hang out be friends and but man my sister knew how to do it the funnest people yeah but i didn't make everybody his hands when I walked in the bar, but oh my yeah. yeah. Well, you you don't want to be a home wrecker. <laughs> yeah, no, that's definitely not it. <laughs> okay, so back to rapid fire. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Do you like the smell of gasoline? Yes. Oh, I was way too How- excited about that. Oops. <laughs> How many redheads are you friends with? Zero. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I think I know your answer to this already, but asking permission or for be- begging for forgiveness. Permission. Really, Miss, I sneak out of the house. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it depends what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just like overly considerate, and I'm like, I always want to ask consent, even for like most basic things. I'm overly considerate. I'm like, oh my god, is it okay if we do X Y Z? Is it okay if we go out here? Like, oh no. But if it's something that's just me, then yeah. 
forgiveness. Hello. Okay. <laughs> it depends who's involved. All right. Is Jimmy Kimmel funny? No. <laughs> I'm sure he is with some people. It just doesn't. Yeah. Matter. <laughs> okay. So. South Florida. Musician. Mm, Y'all not gonna like my answer. Oh. <laughs> oh God. That could easily be like. Uh, I don't want to slander on nobody. I feel bad. <laughs> ba very basic answer. The men in pop are not doing it for me. Y'all just okay. stand at a mic and do nothing. Yeah. Do yeah. I me. agree with you on that. I agree with you. I'm not gonna name no names. Okay. I'll let. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Final question. If you want your music to send a message, what would that message be? The message. The message would be that with time, everything heals. And when you're in that process of it, someone always is going through the same thing as you. I just hope my music provides solace for somebody. That's really solace good. And mm -hmm. I love that. So what's next for you? Well, I do have a project called Apparition. It's coming out on January 27th, so that's next mm -hmm. week, Thursday. Um, okay. It's just like a mini album that um, I initially wasn't even going to put it out, to be honest, but it was one of those things I was like, you know what, just for my own spirit, this needs to be out. Um, so that's coming up soon. There is one more music video attached to that, so that's exciting. Okay. And hopefully some more shows coming up soon, but that will be announced a little later. Okay. And what are your future goals? Oh, my future goals. Oh, I would love to just do everything I'm doing now just on a much bigger scale. I would love to go on tour. Like, that's one of my goals this year, um, going on tour and hopefully putting out another album. But I don't want to say too much on that. Okay. All right. So that's all I have for you. Is there anything you wanted to say? To go buy the Luna merch. I got her shirt oh, here. Where can they find her uh, merch at? Yes, it's at lunascar.com. Everything is always on livescore.com. <laughs> but no, I appreciate you having me on here. This was so fun. This was No, so I appreciate fun. you you coming on. I really enjoyed it. I really did. Aww. And I'm glad that I had the opportunity to do it. And hopefully the right person will hear it and be like, ooh, is that Luna girl? Yay. Yep. Hope and I'm on Bad Bunny. I'm on it. Yes, yes, yes. Let's get that to happen. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> <laughs> It'll happen. Oh, it's going to happen sooner than later because I'm on it. I'm on the case. There we go. Boom. All right, Luna. Well, thank you so much. And you enjoy the rest of your day. And, um, yeah, hopefully maybe, you know, down the, the down. And you can come back on after your new album and everything. And we'll talk again. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I'd love to do that. So you can definitely right. link up there. Thank you so much, Luna. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I know all the time that I can do.